Hello world, uh, this is me again and uh, sorry I look in the right state this morning, can't help it, it's just age I suppose. Um, I'm here to talk about the um, Riga RP8 and the RB808 tone arm with the exact um, cartridge on it. Okay, this is a review. Okay, um, it'll probably also include uh, a few comments about the ARIA uh, phono stage as well because uh, uh, unbeknownst to people I kind of upgraded that at the same time and uh, yeah I've now put that into the system and uh, yes so that's now taken the place of the Creek OBH15. Okay um, so yeah it's gonna kind of it's in a sense it's a mixed bag really um, yeah, uh, in all the in all the places where it counts, this review will be a very positive one. Uh, there'll be one or two little niggles, which you would hope are so tiny that if ever anyone from Riga ever came across these videos, that they would actually sort them out, really. Because, um, yeah, um, they're tiny things and you just think, why, 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 why did you not sort that little bit out? Okay, all right, so um, to start off with then, um, the first thing I did was live with the, um, with the RP8 uh, in with the Creek um, Phono stage. Okay, now um, in that guise, the first thing I did was put on Paolo Nutini's Caustic Love album, um, which is actually really quite an amazing album. I love it, um, and um, yeah, uh, at the, it, when you put a new thing in your system, sometimes the effect is slightly underwhelming, and I had to kind of, because um, I thought, oh, this is a new piece of vinyl, because it is a new piece of vinyl relatively, it's only a few months old now, I think it came out last year at some point, yeah, and I've played it quite a bit, so I know the album quite well. And um, yeah, so uh, I think it was uh, "Funk My Life Up," um, "Scream." I think. Let me let me get the album. Actually, hang on. <coughs> yeah, here we are. All right. So yeah, yeah, it's "Scream," "Funk My Life Up." That's the, that's the title of it. Yeah, and I thought, oh, this is a new album. Shouldn't be all that noisy, should it? Shouldn't be a whole load of surface noise, and lo and behold, there actually wasn't a whole load of surface noise. And then the next thing that kind of came, um, sort of streaming into my consciousness, was the fact that I could actually, you know, tell that the RB808 was actually holding that music so steady. Um, that um, it, you were just so aware of the timing and also of how deep the bass was going, okay? Now, record players do do bass, okay? Um, <coughs> the P5 wasn't exactly a slouch in that area. Um, and what, you know, it, it didn't, you know, shake the world to seismic levels, you know, but um it and, and what there was there was entertaining but this is this is just another level you know you know you really actually feel it going down there it's much more tuneful um than um you would also think it to be as well um you know because when you go out clubbing or something like that you know you you know you, you just like hear you know huge levels of bass shaking walls and that sort of thing, you know, um, in uh, a local club uh, just down the road from me, you can actually go in there and, um, <clears throat> you know, you just think, oh my God, this music's bassy, isn't it? Whatever. And you pop to the toilet and you just hear the whole of everything just shaking in there and there's a huge metallic ring and it's and it's just awful and you know just thought you know please sort that out kind of thing you know so um 
on the RP8, on, it's really, um, what's the word I'm after? It's well controlled. It's well controlled. The timing is really, really spot on. It's so spot on that when I played Arrival, um, now, uh, Dancing Queen, on the track Dancing Queen, um, you feel that that edit um, where the second verse was chopped out, um, that long word Queen cuts off far more abruptly um, when it's about to join um, the, uh, the the you're at ease, you turn them on verse that cuts off so abruptly there, um, and it's, it's never really aware of it. But you know, I suppose you know you don't want to say, well, you know, oh, it's a fantastic record player because it reveals all the flaws of records. Yeah, if a record's really badly done, it'll tell you it's badly done. But um, I think any record player will, you know. But um, you know, it's that timing, that that real sense of timing is um, so entertaining. It's so entertaining. Okay, so yeah, I played Paolo Nutini. Next thing I did was uh, get my uh, Vinyl Planets Suite by Holst because I had a friend round and he wanted to hear it. Plopped it on, and I thought, oh, classical record really quiet at the beginning, oh it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be drowned in crackles, you know, because most of my classical records are, you know, second hand and, you know, it's, um, you know, a, a lot of them, most of them in fact, you know, have a lot of crackle and stuff on them, you know, um, and that's probably why Rudolph will tell you why I played them on CD, whatever. Well, my God, my God, God, I put on Mars the Bringer of War, and from, yeah, tiny little crackle before the music started, but then suddenly, and out of more or less total silence, up popped those first strains of Mars the Bringer of War, and I thought, you know, that's when I thought, blimey, this thing really is quiet isn't it? It's really quiet. Okay. So, you know, and that is the, the case time and time and time again, even my really noisy with the Beatles, which was one of the, you know, first records I tried that day was quiet. It was quiet. It won't be long, has a very sizzly, um, cymbal track on it. And, uh, yes, that was, there it was controlled there's there, there's a there's a big element of control which um is also going on here and i suppose it's coming down to the timing it's coming down to the fact that um you know it's it, it's just such an entertaining record player i mean there's there's just really not that you know many superlatives that you can use to describe it but you know if we look at the real strengths then we have silence in the grooves okay uh, much quieter yeah a knackered record you'll still be able to tell it's knackered because everything's relative isn't it but you're starting that you know that the, the the point from which you're starting from is the fact that this thing really does suppress surface noise. Now, this is with the exact cartridge. The exact cartridge is a good mate for the RP8, but it's not the best um, that Riga would recommend. You know, um, it, you know, they would obviously say go for the Afita cartridge. Well, I can't afford one of those at the moment. Um, but the exact is still a good cartridge. It's still a very natural sounding cartridge so you know so far we you know we, we're talking about that surface noise there which you know is reduced okay hugely okay um, we're going for the timing and the control which is um, <coughs> just spectacular okay um, and we're going for bass okay which um, you know is just revealed to another level Okay, so far those are the three sort of key attributes. But the, the the second thing now we need to talk about this sound staging. Okay, um, 
And so far, remember, I've only got the Creek phono stage on, okay? Um, sound staging, um, it's very natural, okay? Um, you know, one of the thoughts that popped into my head at the time um, was the fact that when I went to hear the um, Isis and Osiris CD player amp combination, which is 12 grand's worth of Riga Hi-Fi, Okay, which I'm not ever suggesting that you spend, but um, the uh, you know one 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 of the chief things that I noticed when you put that on and sat and listened to it was the fact that it was so realistic. You know, um, the 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 stereo imaging was spot on. There was this real sense of physical. You can grab it and touch it. Um, you know, and, I, and I've talked about that enough in other videos. Go away and, you know, watch my, um, you know, top end Riga experience video or whatever it's called. Um, and you can, you know, find out a bit more about that. Um, that um, RP8 record player is a quarter of the price of the CD player the um, uh, ISIS CD player, okay? Um, it's coming through an amplifier, which is still the Mira 3, which is something like a twelfth of the price of the ISIS Osiris, okay? The, of the Riga Osiris, sorry, beg your pardon. So I'm a bit tired as well, sorry. Um, and so, you're thinking, well, hold on, you know, I, I you know, I, I've said as well, you know, when I put the, um, the Apollo R into the system, again, you know, that's, you know, a twelfth the price of the Osiris, and yeah, you know, you, you are being brought sort of slightly closer to that ISIS experience, but this is another level, yet the sound staging moves further back, Okay, it's very refined, it's very controlled, but it's extremely realistic. It really is extremely realistic. Okay, um, and putting the Aria Phono stage on there. Now, I don't want to make too much of a big deal of this, yeah? Yes, the RP8 is a very big upgrade over the P5. There is absolutely no doubt about it. Okay, the P5 is a fantastically entertaining record player, the RP8 even more so, okay? Um, but I don't want to make too much of a, of a big deal of the, of the phono stage thing. The main reason why, um, uh, or, or the main sort of difference, is that the, um, the Creek, yeah, it's... You know, it, it's a, about a third of the price of the Aria, okay? So it's a it's a cheap phono stage, all right? Um, it's a phono stage. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you were to say, you know, it's, uh, you know, I've just bought an RP1 or a project, you know, really basic turntable. Um, I haven't got a phono stage on my amp. What do I do? You'd say, you know, just nip out and get, um, you know, uh, a, a, a 40 or 50 pound, you know, project or Cambridge you know phono stage you know just a basic sort of you know one to you know to do the job essentially a do the job phono stage essentially is what those are okay the creek is a step above that okay um, you know the creek actually is a very musical phono stage as you know has again been proven by the fact that you, you know yes you know the the, the record player, the RP8, is, you know, in terms of, I suppose, pricing structure and everything else, it's it's a whole other level, you know, in um, a, a, and strata above the Creek and the Mira 3, okay? Um, very good, though, the Creek and the Mira 3 are, okay? Um, but... That creek is a fantastic phono stage. The only thing that it wasn't doing particularly well um, was shielding um, the cartridge from um, mains issues, okay? Behind me here, this way, 
uh, is my kitchen, okay? I have got fridges and, you know, washing machines and whatnot in there, okay? Plus I've got two hard drives on my Mac and in my, you know, my sort of new flat is a kind of, you know, loft apartment sort of thing. Um, it's very small, okay? And so um, I did get a bit of mains interference, okay? Um, and, you know, I suppose the big thing that the Aria does above the, um, above the creek is um, shield you from um, those, you know, extraneous uh, pops and sort of hums and things that are coming through even when... Um, the record player was turned off because you know as, as i said to you before now um you know um the motor is now controlled from the ttpsu okay there's no on off switch on the deck itself okay so you have to actually make sure that that's um that the ttpsu is turned off and switched out of the system um but still with the amp on the um on the uh, input selector to select the record player, as it were, as opposed to the CD player or something. Um, you were getting loads of pops, cracks, whistles and stuff like that. And popping the Aria in is probably quite an expensive way of clearing that up. The electronics in there are much, are much, much better. Okay, sonically, the difference was not night and day. Okay, there is, because it's quieter, um, you know, again, it takes off yet another veil. Um, you know, uh, the first record I played, um, well, the last record I played with the Creek and the first record that I played with the Riga Aria um, was uh, Replicas by Tubeway Army. Okay, and um, yeah, again, you know, um, the guitars on that album are quite um second fiddle you know compared to you know his first two albums or well, was it first album yeah and you know and, and you know some of the demos and stuff like that you know gary newman at that time was a punk bloke you know and you know the guitars were key and whatnot by the time you'd moved to replicas he'd found a few synthesizers in the studio and thought i can do something with that i can make some music with that whenever and so Replicas is a far more synth orientated album, okay? And so you're not really aware of anyone rocking out, okay? Until <coughs> along comes the RP8 with the exact cartridge and the Riga Aria Phono stage. And then suddenly you are aware of the fact that, you know, the person playing the guitar, which I assume is Gary himself, you know, is actually putting some feeling into it, putting some expression into it. There's phrasing there that you're aware of. And, you know, it's, um, you know, it, it just adds a livelier kind of dimension to the album. You know, songs like It Must Have Been Years. Um, and, uh, yeah, The Mac Man. Oh dear, sorry to tell you this, but I became aware of a of an anomaly in The Mac Man. I won't tell you exactly what that anomaly is, but yeah, there is one there. Um, but it, you know, again, is taking a system that is, you know, throwing detail at you to to um, to, to bring it out. But yeah, um, yes, uh, yeah, you listen quite carefully. Yeah, uh, but yeah, that you know, this 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 is, is this realism. You know, my mate and I listened to um, uh, to Simon and Garfunkel's Bridge Over Troubled Water last night, and you know, it's just. Um, an incredible experience. I mean, I've, I think I've, you know, said somewhere before, you know, when, when I was listening to the P5, you know, one of the, the first things I became aware of was the studio space um, that Bridge Over Troubled Water is, you know, being played in. Um, you know, the fact that, you know, you, you'd imagine that there's this great big red, you know, sort of silence recording in process thing on the door because, you know, it is that quiet you are aware of the studio space but um you know the the voices you can almost touch them you can see them there at the microphone you know just you know um and, and, it, and it is lovely it's just you know incredible to behold piano keys and stuff like that have real weight to them you know of a person actually playing them okay um i found there's um 
I ought to put it in the description. Oh, blimey, I've got to put my password in again because I'm just talking too much. Give us a sec. Yeah. Um, yeah, I found um, uh, some demos on YouTube of um, you know, other other decks, you know, like the SME Model 20, I think there is there, and uh, you know, a couple of Lin turn tables and that sort of thing. Um, I'll put the guy's name up. I can't exactly remember what it is, but... Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll pop it in the description, but go there and listen to um, some of the some of the demos there. Now, I'm pretty sure that a lot of those things that he's playing there, apart from Miss Peggy Lee, which I'll talk about maybe, um, but I'm pretty sure that, you know, a lot of the, the records that he's playing are hi-fi demo records. And those hi-fi demo records, you know, they tend to be sort of very sort of... Um, you, you know, anal recordings of jazz and that sort of thing that are really just showing off the recording equipment and showing off the, um, the, the technology rather than, you know, getting involved in the music. Um, but um, the, there's a jazz sort of piano based drum sort of thing, you know, a, that was playing. And, you know, yeah, yes, it sounded like there was a hammer hitting every single key but it didn't sound particularly natural as to what a piano sounded like but yeah um you know listening to something like bridge over troubled water you're just aware of the technique of the pianist okay this is not someone playing a typewriter like i play the piano this is you know a, a, a real pianist who's aware of the tonal gradations that he's um that he's producing yeah uh, you know another another records to listen to for piano but while it's sort of still in my head the second song on diamond and rust diamonds and rust dun, 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 um joan byers is diamond and rust album from 75 and i should get it really to find out what it is i can't remember what the um um what it is ah oh, yes it is a simple twist of fate that's it it's a uh, bob dylan one um and yeah um you know, again, you know, on a lesser record deck, and I've had a few of them, um, <coughs> you're kind of aware that that's, you know, a sort of tinkly-winkly piano thing. You know, sort of, yes, it's a it's a key instrument, but it's adding in the, you know, the, the instrumental bits for, um, you know, in between the vocal lines, and it's, you know, uh, sometimes comes into the fore. But, you know... The RP8 will tell you that there is somebody playing that piano, okay? And it's got weight to it, and it's got zest and oomph and, you know, guts to it, you know? It's not a tinkly-winkly little thing that, you know, um, that the other record players, lesser decks, will tell you that it is, okay? Um, so, yeah, um, you know, beware of hi-fi demos, <laughs> and, uh, and, yeah... Um, you know, the, 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 the RPA is a, you know, presents things in a much more natural sounding way to that, okay? Um, you know, yes, it's an absolutely superlative upgrade to a mid-range record player. You know, this is, you know, almost top flight in Riga's range. Yes, there are other manufacturers that will charge more, okay? Now, this is where I'm going to come on to a couple of slight downsides, okay? Um, they are in the main thing because, you know, majorly this is what on earth does the record player sound like, okay? Once, because I don't fiddle with things, okay? I don't sort of take things apart and change things and whatnot. You know, I'm not called cool Clem or anyone like that, you know. Um, once it's there, plonk it on the turntable, set it up, plug it in, play records, that's all I want to do, okay? And that's all these things are made for, okay? Riga uh, setup processes have, by and large, been um, very uh, simple, you know, plug it in, forget it, okay? Um, and you wonder why it's not quite the same now, okay? The first thing, you know, when uh, the guy in the shop was packing up my RB, my RP8, and it'd been on display 
for a little while and he, you know and he's you know he swapped the cartridge for me to the exact um and uh you know so there it is it's out in the thing and i looked at the t and looked at the um the tracking thing i thought you know oh is this one where you've got to guess the uh um you, the, the tracking weight and use scales for it I said no the markings are there well, where are they then you've got to use a torch to see them they're tiny little black sort of pop up -y sort of indenty things in the plastic and they are there but even on a relatively light day like today you'd need a torch to see them you know <coughs> but that's you know absolutely ridiculous okay um the push in pull out anti skate thing which was you know for me i first encountered it on the p5 on the p on the p3 which is what i had before um there was a much more kind of accessible anti skating um mechanism which was actually sort of flat on the deck itself you know on the arm board itself and what you did was you moved a switch like that with your finger like that it wasn't a push in pull out thing where you've got to sort of crouch down and say oh god how far in is that all gold you know um and uh the push in pull out thing seems a little bit looser than um the, the the one on the p5 um quite easy to accidentally when you're um when you're queuing a record it's quite easy to knock that and knock the anti-skating out okay i feel that if it was laying flat you know and just the sort of button that you move like that um marked by the way zero one two whatever it happens to be um then that would be much easier. You know, how much? You know, how much money would a tiny little splash of paint to mark in? You know, zero point five one one point five two on the on 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 the tracking uh, uh, control B. You know, that's just um, you, you know. You just think, well, that's just so simple. Why didn't you do it, Riga? You know, um, it because you know even now. You know, now, again here now, <laughs> depends what kind of person you are. Are you bothered about the exact number that the thing should be on or are you bothered that, that it should be, you know, that, that, that the tracking should be sort of more or less right? Okay. Um, I don't know, really. It would be nice to know that, you know, you know all Riga cartridges, you know, track at 1.75 grams. It's not a difficult thing to remember, okay? It would be nice if 1.75 grams were marked on the actual tracking force gauge. It would be nice if 1.75 grams were marked correctly and visibly on an anti-skate control, okay? It really isn't that difficult, okay? Um, and I really feel that Riga have, you know, uh, have just been a pain in the neck by not doing that, okay? Um, the other little niggle is that even with the Aria Phono stage, I am still not able to plug my thing in with these on. I don't know what the problem is. I don't really see why there should be a problem. But these things here will not, you know, if you screw them onto the terminals, they will not plug into the socket on the phono stage. And I can't understand why. There doesn't seem to be any difference, but, you know, in, in widths or anything like that. But why won't they plug in, Riga? You know, <laughs> why won't they plug in? It's a real, you know, <laughs> what's, you, you know, what's the problem? Why? You know, um, so yeah, um, so you know, the, those little setup things um, just are a pain in the neck, really. Um, so let me tell you, just for um, the way I eventually kind of got my um, tracking and anti skating about right, okay. Um, I approximated 
where I thought 1.75 grams was on the tracking thing and then uh, approximated where I thought it was on the anti-skating okay now I have got the give yourself a stereo checkout record and you can see my demonstrations on YouTube for that I like that record just because I think it's really funny okay uh, you know this sort of BBC man so now I'm moving over to the right where there is a very pretty girl you know and you, and you just kind of think you know slap him <laughs> God's sake <laughs> um, get out of the way Paolo I have also got in my hi-fi armory okay and I found this you know um, relatively recently in the last few years um, in a in a second-hand shop and it still works quite well I hardly ever play it because you know it is not the kind of record that you actually play it's just full of test tones and stuff like that but where is it worn? Hopefully you can still hear me, people. I have this thing as well, produced in the 70s, I think. Uh, I think prior to the advent of CD, okay? And uh, what it gives you, yes, it still gives you that I'm standing on the left, I'm standing on the right, this tone is central, this tone's out of phase, so, you know, you can check the phasing of your speakers and whatnot, okay? Um, it gives you... Um, three track three test tones for tracking okay um and if your tracking downforce uh is correct it should be able to play um you know a, a basic bread and butter hi-fi e deck of the you know i suppose rp1 p3 kind of level you know project debut that sort of thing ought to be able to play at least the first one okay um and you know so you know you get it right you get the tracking force and the bias set so that the tone being played stays constant for the whole track okay uh, they last about a minute or something like that it's a minute of torture i have to say you know guantanamo couldn't have done any better um but it should be a straight continuous tone okay and then that tone is altered slightly for a second thing where um, you know if you're if you're really meticulous in your setup and absolutely spot on and your hi-fi can cope with it again you should have the same thing a straight tone okay and it does it for the downforce and then there are three other tracks uh, again graded you know for you know basic hi-fi setup should be able to play the first one you know uh, slightly more um, advanced setup um you know with you know more meticulous fussing around and stuff you should be able to play the second track and the third track is you know an extremely demanding one um and so you have that for um and that is for lateral tracking as well okay which should lateral tracking is essentially anti-skating okay because all anti-skating is is stopping um when when um you've got a a, a record spinning round and you plop a, a a tone arm on it it will it will feel the urge to push towards the center of the record okay um and so if you apply full anti-skating it will zoom straight to the outside and what you want is it to sort of play somewhere in the middle okay um i have got blank grooves as well the, pa the paolo latini has got a blank side um and uh yeah I, my give yourself a stereo checkout record has also got a blank groove but um it's um i, th I think you know it's, it's a much more scientific way to try and do it with this okay there is a third uh check out thing on here uh it's the determination of bias correction the inner grooves of the disc um because uh that's where you know you know people say you know end of side distortion and that sort of thing you know um and again if you can get that to play correctly that is you know just a you know just twiddle with the bias again until you can get that record that 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 track to sound you know correct okay um Bias also has uh, to do with um, 
correct stereo imaging as well because obviously if the um, if if the stylus is pointing, you know, it, it is dragging towards, you know, one groove rather than the other one, uh, your stereo is going to be slightly off. It also has to do with cueing and leave and um, uh, cueing up tracks. Okay, and yeah, again, this is something the RB808 tone arm is not brilliant at. Okay, um, yeah, it could be me. It could be the fact that it's in a corner. I can't really see exactly where uh, the thing should land. Um, but yeah, so you really have to fiddle around with that anti-skating. Otherwise, you know, you could find that the that you know as the arm goes down, you know, even if you're just starting on the edge of a side, um, you know, it could drift off and land, you know, on the side of the turntable, and you really don't want that. Okay, so um, you know you. What I'm saying here, in a nutshell, is that setup is slightly fiddlier than it should be. Okay, um, you know, due to the lack of proper markings, uh, the bias thing being rather sensitive. Um, you know, so it's you know making the need to use thing tools like this to. Um, uh, you, you, you know to fine-tune your deck and that sort of thing and I really don't like tweaking there are people that would tweak forever you know and and really would, would love it okay I don't want to do that I don't really see that I have to um, and I think Riga have you know missed the trick that they had before you know you know with that you know I don't know what the what the RP ones like but with the um, with the new RP one um, so with the old RP one all you had to do was you know put the counterweight on didn't even have to worry about you know balancing it i don't think you just twizzled it until it uh, until you know this marker was in line with something else and you know that was it set that was it done with that particular cartridge you know if you wanted to change a cartridge to you know perhaps another manufacturer's or something like that then yes you could you know um you know do do you know the normal counterweight balancing and that sort of thing but you know um i just think that you know someone that buys an rp1 someone that buys an rp8 you know some people who buy rega gear in fact you know by and large you know they're attracted to the fact that these things you know give at their price points they give the very best quality that 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 you know um the price point could possibly give you and the least amount of bother, okay? And uh, yeah, I think, yeah, sorry, Riga, you missed a trick there. Um, but, you know, coming back to the real positives of the deck, um, you know, particularly with the Aria Phono stage, but even without it, even with lesser, you know, with, with a lesser Phono stage, you know, and, and I'm sure that, you know, couple that with, you know, an illicit amp or, you know, uh, a, a similar grade from another manufacturer, you know, uh, and you know, I still got my R three speakers here. You know, these R three speakers were, you know, um, you know, bottom of the range floor standards in two thousand and five or two thousand and four, two thousand and five, I think, um, when I got those, and you know, the upgrade from. A P5 to an RP8 is well worth it. Sonically, the rewards are just there, and you know it is just amazing to behold. Okay, um, and so upgrade with confidence. Okay, if you're someone who's building a hi-fi system from scratch, I would still say go for it. Okay, but just you know. It might, it might be worth it just to find a friendly dealer who'll just come in and set it for you and leave it, okay? Um, because, yeah, you know, it, 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 it's well worth it, but, you know, it, that, that, that sort of, you know, tiny sort of setup procedure um, thing just takes the edge off it. And I actually, you know, before I played the thing, I actually found myself getting in a bad mood and you shouldn't be doing that, you know? You shouldn't be doing that, you know. I'd lug this thing up, you know, you know, on the train, lugged it up however many flights of stairs, 
you know, and I'm there and I'm trying to get the thing out of the box and, you know, and trying to unplug everything else and get behind things and stuff like that. And I got this thing on there and I thought, where, how on earth am I supposed to be able to see that, you know, the tracking number, you know, sorry, but silly. Okay. Anyway, I've ranted on enough. Um, I have a slight issue with, um, doing uh two slight issues actually with putting up um uploads onto youtube um the first thing is that um the 27 inch imac which i'm now using uh doesn't have an analog input okay um the uh uh the midi uh interface that i've been using for recording with um is appallingly bad and I don't really want to put that into this system and use it okay at the moment my system is set up you know as you know as, as basic as basic as basic you know with hi-fi components plugged into an amplifier and the amplifier plugged into speakers and you know um, I have the headphone output socket from my iMac which I'm touching now and which you can't see so I won't um, plugged into uh, an input on my amp so that I can watch telly and whatnot uh, through my speakers um, and that's as basic as it's going at the moment okay um, I do need to sort out my um, uh, you know a, a, an interface so I can't really at the moment bung any um, uh, any uploads onto YouTube also I got I didn't get a copyright strike I don't think but I got a, a nasty message saying that Universal had blocked one of my videos. It, it's been one that was put on in about 2009. So, you know, sorry, Universal, you, you know, I, I've deprived you of about 50p over those four years. I'm really, really sorry. You know, perhaps I'll write you a check out for it. Um, but, you know, um, I don't really want to um, sort of incur any YouTube copyright wrath, okay? So I might do one or two with the RP8 when I've got a proper interface to do it with, okay? It might not be that long, in the next few weeks or something like that. So yeah, um, oh God, I really have been ranting on, haven't I? So yeah, you can expect a few um, a, a, a few uploads but I'm not gonna you know in in the past I used to put put them on you know a couple of weeks sometimes you know um, and I don't want to do that okay um, and if you find that some have gone that you've liked listening to or whatever then I do um, I do apologize you know they've either been blocked yeah in fact actually yeah you know it, that that's the thing that they, they've been blocked you know um, I had one where I was comparing um, you know, uh, internet radio stations and that's um, you know, they're not like that one either. Okay, I think Warner's owned one of the songs that was being played on the radio. So, um, so yeah, uh, I I need to be a be, be a wee bit cautious about that. But anyway, I'm going to wrap this up because it's over forty minutes long. Okay, all right, I'll see you later then. Bye.